Now we're going to look at how we can use the Bubble Frame app to add elements and shadowing to photos and journal cards. So if we open the app, we'll see the front screen. We're going to select New Project. And then at the top here, we need to select the size of our canvas. Now they don't have a 6x4 option, so we select 3x2 because that's exactly the same dimensions. And then we click here on the box that says Empty Canvas. Now we need to fill the canvas by coming down here with our photo or our journaling card that we're going to use in this case. So select Fill and then Photo. Find where your journaling cards and photos for the project are stored. And select this one. And then what we need to do now is to lock the crop aspect because we're going to keep it the same size. Now we add different elements by creating bubbles on the journaling card. And we do that by putting two fingers together and then drawing out a circle. We then select on fill and that will allow us to choose the element we're going to put in here. Bubble Frame app doesn't currently have a Dropbox option, so you need to have stored your elements on your phone. And the best way to do that is to store them in Dropbox to preserve the transparency and then export them to your camera roll on your phone. So I'm just going to select the element I want and we're going to choose these flowers here. And you can see the flowers come in and overfill the box. So we need to reduce the size of the element within the box. So what we do is we come up to this crop mark here at the top and then we, using our fingers, start by placing your fingers and then squeezing the size of the element in. You will also see we've got this white frame around the bubble. So we need to change some of the aspects of the bubble style. So come down to bubble style and the first thing we need to do is make sure that you're in the shape option and reduce the border width to nothing. That will then get rid of the border around the bubble. I'm just going to move my flowers over a little bit. And I'm also going to alter the shadowing slightly. So again, we're in, coming to bubble style. The shadow option at the bottom. And I'm going to reduce the offset to the blur down slightly to about 25. And I'm going to leave the opacity at about 18. So we get a fairly realistic shadowing there. Now, what if we want to change the size of the element once we start playing because I often pop it on there do the shadow inside no actually I want that smaller or bigger so we have these options at the top when you select the bubble so this crop sign crops the size of the image within the bubble but once we've got it fitting in the bubble we then use these um, symbols here so the four arrows obviously will allow you to move it around the up and down arrow allows you to adjust the size and you can go up or down with the size just by going up or down the page and then this is for adjusting shape now we tend to use this more when we use ribbons etc because you can change the shape of your bubble because the whole point of this is just to make sure your element fits within the bubble so I'm now going to go back to adjusting position and get it in the right place and then dismiss now I want to add another element to the card so using my two fingers and pushing outwards I'm going to create a second bubble and I'm going to fill that bubble with a photo find my elements and I'm going to use these lovely label words. Again, 
It fills the bubble, so we need to come up to the crop sign to make the element smaller within the bubble. And we're just going to squeeze it down till it fits within the bubble. Come down to the bottom to bubble style and make sure we're on the shape option and get rid of the border. And then I'm going to just move that slightly. Now, my um, word art has come out perfectly on top of the flowers. But what if we wanted to bring the flowers on top of the word labels? Once you've selected a bubble and you're in this screen, if you come up here to the top left hand corner, you'll see a little image of each of the layer you're working on. And here is where you can select different layers. So if you want to select the flowers because they've disappeared behind, but you can also grab the handles, and move them up and down to decide which way you would like their positioning. It's also a lot easier when you've got lots and lots of different elements on a page to use this to select the one that you actually want to be working on. I just want to change the shadowing slightly on the word labels. So I come back down to bubble style, having selected them. Down the bottom to shadow. Just change the offset to the blur to about 24, 25, and the opacity down to about 18. So we get a reasonable shadow style. And there we are, my journal card is now ready. So in order to export it, we come up to the top right hand corner where the little box and the arrow is. We select that. And it brings up an option slider at the bottom where we can choose the resolution. I always have mine set to high res. And then we just select on the orange button. And then it will render it as a flat, a flat image. And then ask you what you want to do with it. We're going to save the image to camera roll. So now that that is saved, we go back into the project life again. And I've still got my page open at this point from the other edit. But if it's not there, we go into the library and select it. Select the box we want to change. And select our new journaling card. So there we are. Simple as that. Again, for exporting down to the bottom, always select export and not share for the higher res option. 12 by 12. It'll flatten your page and then we're ready to save the image. Simple and easy to do.